Hey, what is up everyone? Ladies and gentlemen, your boys and girls. Here it is. Take a look at it. I don't I don't know where to start. I'm really sorry that there wasn't any update between the last one and the final product, but it just went so fast. By the way, just for the new viewers or the subscribers who have missed uh, what's going on in the channel. In January, I started this project where I said I want to build a guitar entirely from scratch and my mindset was like no hopefully it's going to play at all I mean now two months later I have a fully playable guitar that sounds rather good <laughs> I would go ahead and say this was kind of life-changing. It's one of the best things that I've ever done in my life. I want to start building guitars someday in my life. And, you know, not sure if I could ever live from that, but even as a side job over the weekends, it is such a huge passion. Well, it's probably going to be a long video, so I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. Just so much to talk about this. Let's just go over the specs without a comment. We have a three-piece ash body with this antique ash treatment, if you will. We have a one-piece Bobinga neck, a European oak fretboard. Hardware-wise, we have a Schaller 3D6 bridge in vintage copper uh, finish. No-name locking tuners from Axtac. We have a graphite nut, which was pre-slotted. We have a single push-push volume, uh, push-pull, sorry, volume. Three-way switch. And last but not least, we have Roncisvall custom pickups, hand-wound in Italy. And we have some 24 jumbo nickel frets on a 20-inch radius fretboard and abalone dot inlays. Now the fun begins, I would say. <laughs> I think the most efficient way to, to talk about this would maybe be just write your questions under this video. And I'm going to answer those questions in the next video, so I'm just not talking for hours and hours about this guitar, about stuff you don't want to know. So before I start talking about this guitar in detail, I want to thank Schalle for providing this awesome bridge. It is very simple but very intuitive. Uh, I was happy to choose this one because it doesn't require any string through drilling because I didn't have a drill press for this build. It is very simple but you can adjust anything, everything. You can adjust even adjust the string spacing. Uh, which you can't do on normal bridges. Also, huge thanks to Roncesvall for sponsoring this amazing set of pickups for this guitar. They make this guitar sound really, really good. I'm especially a fan of this neck pickup. It is round, but still has a lot of attack. It's like, it's like the perfect neck pickup. <laughs> The bridge is also very modern sounding and, you know, aggressive and uh, wow. I'm just amazed how this turned out. It's unbelievable. And it made me realize that, you know, building a guitar is not necessarily a matter of, you know, some wizardry, but it's just a matter of time and precision, mainly time. <laughs>
what separates this from an absolutely gorgeous, flawless 2500 euro custom guitar is just, you know, the, the, the amount of details or the, the, the level of perfection which this doesn't have, you know, it has scratches like here which are made during the installation of the pickups. It has like, you know, some weird spots on the neck which are, you know, not perfectly sanded or, you know, feel a bit, you know, the neck doesn't feel very uniform, it feels handmade, rip outs or splinters, which you don't feel now. It, it feels good, but it's just, you know, for the eye, also some dings and dents in the headstock. A fraction of a second, you're not careful and there will be a dent in your guitar. It is that level of perfection that separates this guitar from, from you know, true custom guitars or really expensive guitars. Also, the fretwork is luthier with Cedis, would probably die from just seeing those frets. Some are not sitting properly and the fret job is not really nice as well. I've got some buzzing. Ah, I mean, okay, yeah. There's some wizardry going on on very high-end custom guitars, but I mean for a first build, I've never done this. I've learned this watching YouTube videos, mainly crimson guitars, and you know, just watch and repeat. This would need many more coats of oil, but yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> I think I put around a hundred hours into building this, but I took it really, really slowly. You know, I I routed the neck pocket three times at least before you know, routing it actually in the body and stuff like that. And you have like details, like uh, stuff you really don't notice anymore, like like the beveling around the entire back of the body. You know, it's like yeah, okay, there's some beveling going on, but this took like I don't know an hour at least to do this. I'm particularly proud of this area right here, of this input jack recess and uh, the non-screw cavity cover which is held by magnets. Check this out. This is MDF by the way with a flame maple veneer on it. Uh, it looks very nice. They just don't look at this mess right here. Uh, yeah, nice. Normal wood screws. Uh, <laughs> That didn't have, you know, black ones or so with uh, washers, but they do their job and uh, I think it kind of matches, you know, the philosophy of this basement build just to take, you know, regular wood screws and not something, you know, fancy. How does it play? It plays surprisingly well. It has a lot of fret bars, but it doesn't bother the playing and the action is really low. It really has a nice acoustic resonance to it, which I'm really surprised of. Might have to do something with the very good neck joint, if I might say so. Uh, it was very good, you could lift the guitar actually with the neck like this. Yeah, I chose not to capture the process on video, because I just wanted to work on my own down there. And, you know, just not having to bother with the camera equipment. And just, you know, let, let my creativity go without checking the camera if the camera is alright, if it's in focus and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I did that because I really, really enjoyed my life down there. <laughs> fun times, fun times. I'm missing this basement, I'm missing this workshop already, seriously. It has a nice, nice wooden, oily smell to it. So, I would say smell has improved. Just a little story about this um, headstock logo. This is actually the signature of my grandfather uh, that he uses on his paintings. I did that because, you know, it's well, it's obviously my, my grandfather and we share the same family name, but also because he let me build this guitar in his basement and he just, you know, he supported me. I don't know, just like, I felt like dedicating this guitar to his and my name 
uh, for that matter. And um, yeah, turned out quite cool. Just uh, used a Dremel for that and then filled it with wood filler. Zero one. So this is the Steffen Zero One. Uh, it doesn't have strap buttons, if you noticed. I don't know, it just felt too nice here to, to drill holes into there. And probably not gonna use this guitar with a strap anytime soon. <laughs> Were there any problems building this or like, you know, major issues? No. I mean, a build like this is always improvising. You know, how do you do the neck shape? I don't know, just, you know, went ahead and shaped it. Use just my fingertips and my eyes to see if the shape is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, how you say that? Coherent. I must say I'm really really happy with the, with the shape. Uh, by the way, slight issue. It's not noticeable right away, but take a look at the fifth tuner. And then you notice it's like, wow, it's completely off. Yes, it is. I don't know what I did there. When I drilled the hole, it was totally off. I was like, oh. I was like, okay, nobody will notice because I didn't notice myself at first. Uh, but then I wanted to install the tuners and they were touching. They were actually so close that I couldn't make the perfect 90 degree angle to the edge here. So I had to file off on both tuners to make them fit, you know, just onto each other. Um, yeah, these are things that happen. And if this was for a customer, it, was, it would obviously be fucked, this guitar, you know. But since it's just for me, I don't care, just I kept on building, you know. It's just like, okay, whatever, whatever. But of course, you know, if you wanted to take this to a level where you would sell this with the guarantee of premium quality. I mean, this it's a very, very hard job. It's not so hard building a guitar, it's hard to make it perfect in the end. Not damaging it while mounting the hardware or so, because that's, that's when the accidents happen. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this guitar as much as I do. Ah, oh, you can't, sorry. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about the guitar. I actually ordered, you know, wood for the next guitar already, so be prepared for that. Follow me on Instagram right here uh, and check my story highlights where you can watch the entire process uh, in a couple of pictures and, and some videos. It's really cool to see how the guitar is forming. Also, you probably didn't know that, I have a blog on my webpage now, solange.eu. Check it out if you wanna, you know, just... It's not just about guitars and music, it's about random things sometimes. There will be plenty of other things probably coming in the next month, when I might not have the time to do, you know, videos like this one. Please like and share this video if you want to, if you like this. Uh, comment your questions about this build down below and I will answer those in a separate video because uh, I mean just you know wrapping up two months of work in one single video might be just too much or is too much. That's it for today. Take care and I will see you next time.